Sex Positive Podcast is a podcast about dating, sex, love, and relationships. Please go on to our Patreon page, which is Patreon slash Sex Positive Podcast, and support us. As well, you can check us out on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Thank you very much for checking out our podcast, and please help support us by sharing and liking and commenting. And if you have topics that you would like to talk about or comments, please email us at sexpositivepodcast at gmail.com. That's sexpositivepodcast at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Sex Positive Podcast for July the 17th, which is a Friday. Hope you guys are having an awesome week so far. Here's a story. So when I was 23, I was living out in Cleveland, and my friends that I had met through this, like, hippie commune like church coffee house kind of thing um I'd met a friend there and she introduced me to a girl we'll call her Lilo Multipass um she was kind of the same way she's really petite orange or blue or whatever kind of hair that she you know kind of wanted and um I think I met her in a van. It was it was an odd time period. It was a lot of drunken uh, fests and uh, lots of different parties and things like that. And so I was dating this girl, and I you know I was kind of younger at the time. You know I'm 30 now, so it was, I guess it was a while ago. It seems like a really really long time. And uh, we were dating on and off for a while, and then she ended up coming to live with me. And at that point, I never really had anybody who lived with me before. And so I didn't really understand, like, the kind of the dynamics of of how that works out. And also, like, actually taking care of a person when you're working at Chipotle's and you're doing your Chipotle thing and you're completely exhausted all the time because you're, you know, standing up for 10 to 12 hours a day. Your knees are just fucking mush and you really have no clue, you know, what what your life is consisting of. So, and the only time you get to spend time with that person is when you come back home from work or, um, you know, when they're not at work. And so your lives are just intersecting at these random and and weird times. So I remember like there was this other girl that I really liked. I didn't really understand what polyamory was at the time. And so I, I, I made this big mistake. It was like, well, you know, I'm going out to go to this other town and I didn't directly say to this person, hey, I don't want you to stay at my house. But I think it kind of came off like that. And so basically it all ensued in this like devolving of a whole like a whole history in a way in which just kind of separated us in one instant, which I really didn't understand. And it was all because I didn't have this like idea and ability to communicate. In the Free Sex podcast I was listening to today, you guys should check that out. It's really cool. Um, Candace and I don't know the other lady's name. God, I'm so bad. Um, they have a podcast called Free Sex Podcast. You guys can check that out. And they were talking about um, oral sex, fellatio, blowjobs, and stuff like that. And kind of the overarching topic within that is communication and being open to talking directly to a person about what they like and they don't like, what they want and what they don't want. We'll get into blowjobs and fellatio in another episode. But the communication part of it was was super important. I'm studying sociology and and the idea of communicating with people surrounds our entire lives. And it was something that I needed to learn in that instant, which I didn't have. And watching The Fifth Element the other day, it was just, it kind of brought back those, those kind of memories of, of Lilo. And I was like, God damn it. You know, like, it was a really cool person in my life. And um, she was so carefree and just did whatever the fuck she wanted. Didn't, doesn't care about what anybody thinks, just does. Um, 
And in that instant, it was really interesting to me about how you can easily fail or succeed if you don't have the right communication tools and learning how to speak to someone openly about, you know, whatever you're about. And in that moment, I could have been, well, hey, you know, I find this other person really attractive. I'd like to meet and talk to them. And I'd like you to meet and talk with them as well and include them. So even if you're not a polyamorous person, including yourself within both of those relationships and just being open to both people acknowledging your admiration for someone. And if it, you know, proceeds somewhere else, well, then it proceeds somewhere else. But not being so tied, even if you're a monogamous person, you only want to spend your whole life with, you know, one person. Including someone and being inclusive with all of your relationships then assists pretty much everything within your life. And then you start, you know, having groups and groups of people all come together and it be something that is cohesive. Um, that was an interesting portion of my life. I, uh, living in a college town, not going to college, but doing all the other things that everybody else does, you know, working a shitty job, living in a, in a random apartment, um, having a really shitty car that barely drives. Um, those are, that was an interesting time period. Interesting for relationships as well. Um, you know, being 23 in a college town and not working or, I mean, not going to school there, you know, I remember we, we would just, there was friends of friends and both of us would just go off to the, like there was a place called the Alamo and, uh, it was this giant loop of an apartment complex. If you've ever been to, to, to Kent, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, which is near Cleveland. And it's this big giant apartment complex that's hooped in a, in a U shape like the Alamo. And it was just this living, breathing party. It probably still is. I think it's still around, uh, to my knowledge. Um, and literally there's just parties going on 24 hours a day. And it was just an interesting place to meet people. You'd, you'd end up coming with four or five people, then you'd leave with 10 more and you don't know who you ended up coming there with because you're so wasted. Uh, <laughs> and you're just having a, a great time. And then just the, 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 the love and party aspect of that was just great. Uh, that's, it's something that, you know, that can never be relived in a way, at least for me, I kind of too old to be doing that crazy ass shit anymore. But, um, yeah, that was an interesting time. That's the story I've got. That's my story for today. Got to go off to my doctor's appointment, so I will pick up on this episode after. And now, the intermission. Now, a reaction post. This will be fun. So, I was reading reading uh, Kathy Reisenwitz. You can check her blogs out at, and professional writing, she's a professional writer, at Kathy, R-E-I-S-E-N-W-I-T-Z dot com. And she has a post, um... Quote, a follow-up to the divorce post. So she wrote about divorce in one of her articles. And she made a, you know, a a secondary one. And she was talking about the um, positives and negatives of being married. and, And talking about her when she was originally married. And I find it really interesting that, um... Still today, within our society, we generally have a push within education, within religion, towards marriage. Which, if you think about the context of it, what they're talking about is a commercial marriage. They're talking about two people spending a shit ton of money, having some event, getting really angry at each other, uh, roping all their friends into it and their family members, spending a shit ton more money, and then um, 
going down to a courthouse, putting in all this paperwork, and then putting rings on each other. And then when they're done, spending even more money to go on some sort of honeymoon that doesn't really make their lives better, necessarily. So, thinking about it in that context of what marriage, in that sense, really is, what can marriage look like, or what can multi-parties or multi-pass, multiple parties, or one person, I'm sorry, two, two people, um, have a connection with that doesn't include those normatives? I've been thinking about it a little bit, and I kind of came up with a concept that is not normal for most people, which would be to not have a wedding at all, not having a wedding ceremony. Maybe, you know, maybe an event. Okay, sure. But going on a getaway and using the honeymoon aspect of it of going on an adventure and even if you're not moving somewhere taking whatever money that you would normally spend on something and go out and go build a house with multiple rooms set off of the the house itself or um, take that money and donate it directly to a veteran shelter a homeless shelter go to wherever someone needs help and just go feed the homeless or assist in, you know, whatever way that you can. So instead of it being this commercial thing where it's just a, this giant event, we spent all this money pretending to be princess and and a king or prince or whatever, um, (laughs) and, and doing something differently. So, and especially if you're, if you're a Christian, like, you know, I am, if you're a Christian, don't get married. Refuse. Okay, maybe you exchange, you know, rings or whatever, and then you, you share some sort of, you know, event with your family or whatever. But instead of spending all this money on some sort of event, use whatever financial, you know, capital that you have to your advantage intrinsically to your morality which is helping others if you're a christian or you're someone that has a compassion for other people um it's different i mean it's it's a bit odd um not many people would agree with me but hey fuck other people do do what you want to do you know um make it make it something and and, and even if you don't want to just donate all your money to the poor go off to you know mexicali or um, you know, go out to, to Cleveland, explore a new city that you've never been to before, live as the other people would do, um, or just go blow all your money in Key West. I mean, hey, you know, but do something different than the, the norms that we have today. Um, and some of those ideas, you can check out uh, Save the Date Wedding podcast as well. Um, I really like her podcast. She's really up, upbeat and has some really ideas cool ideas for weddings and stuff like that um you guys can check that out so i really like kathy rise much she's just is an amazing amazing person um and i i find it that you know after she um interesting that after she got out of her marriage that she was in um that she's had backlash from people for keeping her original last name. I'm not sure what her original last name was, but I guess she kept it for a while. And, and that's a, that's an odd thing for, for me. I find that people would even exchange names anymore. There's not even like a real reason, maybe merging them, turning them into one name or I don't know, uh, hyphenating or something like that. But I find it really odd. It's, it's really weird to me. Like, I don't see why you have to change your personality to be with somebody. It's like, kind of weird. Um, I mean, unless you want to, I mean, like I, I don't mind if, you know, some, uh, you know, white bread, you know, blonde chick, you know, whatever your socialite, uh, chick that's a cheerleader or something becomes a, a, you know, goth girl. I mean, Hey, that's kind of cool, but you know, like you don't have to change your, your personality or your, yourself to be with somebody. I mean, that's kind of weird. I, I don't, I don't see why that you would need to do that. And, and to changing your name is just really 
fucking weird to me. I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't understand what the purpose is. Like even in olden times, I really don't understand what the why you would do that. It's just weird. So I was listening to the fucking Omics podcast, and um, they were talking about how one of the guys, I think it's JJ, I don't know which guy it is, um, one of the guys from the podcast, um, he's into humans, he's into dudes, he's into chicks, he's just into all people, and he has been going on Grinder. Oh, he did it once. He tried to he tried to make it just seem like he did it multiple times. But he's done this once where he went on Grinder. He met some guys. So he's like he's six foot tall, and he's like a man's man, you know, comparatively to you know some of the other um, guys like other dudes. And so he went on Grinder, met this guy, and just hung out with him, and got him like massaged this guy. Didn't do any sexual stuff at all. Hung out with him ate his candy and left. <laughs> this is the most funniest thing ever. So he's kind of joking about how he's just going to keep doing this, you know, and I'm like, that's freaking genius, you know? So, you know, you go over to somebody's house, you know, you watch their, and he's joking about how, you know, you're just watching Netflix, you know, and smoking their weed and, uh, you know, eating their snacks and stuff, you know? It's just the funniest thing. Um, you know, so the other straight guys on the on the, the podcast were talking about, oh, well, shit, why don't we just go on Tinder and do the same thing? You know, you show up at some girl's house, you're like, hey, don't touch me, you know, like, I, you know, I, I just want to watch Netflix and eat snacks with you. And, you know, just, just to get, you know, free food and uh, massages out of it, you know, I was like, wow, these guys are geniuses, you know, like, so what if you started doing that, you know, like within your other dating relationships, you know, so instead of, um, using hookup apps or even regular dating applications, whatever, just straight up saying, when I first hang out with you, I'm going to watch Netflix and eat popcorn with you and then get to know you and then leave. And then do that for the first five or six, 10, 20 times and see where things go from there. I think they're on to something. I mean, the, the fuckonomics podcast, Hey, they're, they're professional economists and comedians. So, you know, Hey, maybe that, maybe they're onto something of a uh, social revolution. Um, it, it seems really interesting to me. Like, I, I'm not sure how many people have done that before where they, um, have just decided to not, especially if you're a person who is very open with your sexuality. And so you'd go on a date. Most men are, I mean, going on the dating website, meeting some girl, hooking up with her or vice versa. Um, it, it, having the, the wherewithal to say, Hey, I just want to meet a bunch of people drink wine and watch Netflix with them and maybe eat some popcorn and just all about snacks and see where it goes. Or even starting a, an app for people who just want to have snacks and, and drink really good beer or really good wine and watch Netflix. Kind of like those girls, I think they're in Detroit, who started a house of cuddles. And so you can pay money and you can go to their place, then you can have a cuddle fest with them. Which is friggin' amazing. Like, who doesn't want to cuddle? Um... And that needs to be, you know, I think the uh, the Veterans for Peace and uh, the Iraq Veterans Against War should start something like that. That'd be really cool. So it's, as soon as you come back from being in a shithole, um, Afghanistan or Iraq is what I'm referring to. If you haven't refer, haven't heard it referred to that as that, there's a reason for it. Whenever you smell diesel fuel or maybe smell poo, you kind of have a, a flashback of, of poo... Uh, Lakes of Pooh, which actually exists. If you've never been to Iraq or Afghanistan before, you can hear about that on my other podcast, which is Mercenary Metal Podcast. I won't talk about that here. But it would be interesting to start like a whole website based on cuddles and snacks. So snacks, cuddles, and wine, or snacks, cuddles, and beer, or something like that, where you just hang out, have cuddles, drink whiskey, and chill. Uh, I think you guys are on to something, Fuckonomics Podcast. You guys are awesome. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I'm thinking about trying out a new brewery this weekend. Tell me what you guys are into. If you guys like wine, if you're into beer, what do you guys drink? What's the best drink that I possibly could have? I'm open to all things. I don't really like girly drinks, but every time I've had a sip of one, I'm like, hey, it's pretty good. So tell me what you guys like. Um, and tell me what you would like to hear on the next episode. I'm thinking about talking about blowjobs and cunnilingus on the next one. Maybe, maybe not. Depends. Hope you guys enjoy this podcast. 
please check out the Fuckonomics podcast, which is on SoundCloud, and check out my other podcast, which is Mercenary Metal Podcast. If you don't want to listen to death metal and metal and, and hardcore bands and, and military stuff, you don't have to listen to it. But um, check out that podcast, which is on YouTube only, uh, Mercenary Metal Podcast. And then also check out the Free Sex Podcast. Um, bunch of ladies who are Christians who talk about sex. Their last podcast was on blowjobs. So you guys can check that out. Um, please have an awesome weekend and peace. Free Sex Positive Podcast. Free Sex Positive Podcast? Sex Positive Podcast? Yeah. Sex Positive Podcast out. <laughs>